So now that we have seen how threads are created and how they can be used to solve large uh, jobs by parallelization, now we will look at how threads are managed in systems. Essentially, uh, as we have seen, threads are executing contexts and therefore, we need some entities which manages the thread resources, uh, decides which thread should execute in the CPU, uh, what CPU should be used and so on. Uh, so, uh, in order to do this, the two strategies that are available are known as the user threads and kernel threads. So, user threads are threads where the thread management is done by a user level thread library. So, typically in this, the kernel does not know anything about the threads running. In kernel threads, the threads are directly supported by the th kernels and uh, these are sometimes known as lightweight processes. So, we will look at user threads and kernel threads in more detail, taking one at a time. So, let us start with user threads. So, in a user thread as shown over here, we have the kernel space where the operating system or the uh, kernel executes and we have the user space which has different processes executing. Now, each of these processes could have multiple threads uh, running. So, in addition to this, we have a runtime system over here. Uh, this uh, rectangle over here, which manages the several threads in this particular process. Also what is required is a thread table, which is stored as part of this runtime system. So, note that this uh, thread table contains information which is local to only the threads in this particular process. So, for another process, it would have its own runtime system and its own thread table. So, you notice that the number of entries in the thread table is equal to the number of threads that are executing. Also note that the thread table, uh, which is sometimes known as the uh, TCB or the thread control block is different from the process control block, which is stored in the kernel space. Essentially, besides the fact that the thread table will be have far fewer entries compared to the uh, process control block in the kernel space it is also in a user space. So, the advantage of user level threads is that it is extremely fast and it is really lightweight. Essentially, there are uh, this is because there are no system calls required to manage threads. The runtime system which is present over here does all the thread management, all the context switching between the threads and uh, so on. As such, the kernel would not have any knowledge that a particular process has multiple threads. So, the, the second advantage which we will see is that this particular mechanism of uh, supporting threads in a system is useful on operating systems that does not support uh, threading. Another important uh, advantage of this user level threads is that switching between threads is extremely fast and the reason why it is fast is that uh, there is no switch from user mode to protected mode and back to user mode again. So, on the other hand, switching between threads would just uh, require a, a switch within the user mode itself from, from one thread to another. So, the drawbacks on th uh, are also several. So, one important drawback is that um, there is a lack of coordination between the operating system kernel and the threads. So, this is because the OS is not aware that a process is multi-threaded and also does, has no indication about how many threads are present in a particular process. So, uh, to take an example of what problems it could cause. So, consider a system which has two processes and uh, one of these processes has 100 threads. Now, the kernel does not know about this because the kernel is unaware about the uh, several threads uh, that are present in a process. And therefore, when it does uh, context switching, it is unaware that one process requires a far more uh, number of threads compared to the other one. So, it would allocate the same time slice interval for uh, the process with 100 threads uh, as well as the process with a single thread. So, uh, what happens is that because the schedule in the kernel is unaware about the number of threads that are executing. Uh, 
Therefore, scheduling decisions cannot be made to favor processes with the larger number of threads. So, another drawback uh, with respect to the scheduling comes uh, when the threads are in different states. For example, let us say this particular process has uh, three threads and one of these threads is in runnable state while the other two th uh, threads are in blocked state. Now, the operating system uh, has is unaware of this. So, uh, what should the decision be? So, since one of the threads should be runnable, it can execute in the processor. Uh, so, should it be considered as a runnable process or since there are two threads which are blocked, should this process be considered as a blocked process or not made to execute in the processor. A third issue occurs with respect to system calls. Now, suppose system calls are blocking in the sense that when one of these threads invoke a system call, then all other threads will need to wait until that first thread completes its system call invocation. Thus, in order to uh, support this user level thread model, what is required is that the OS should preferably be supporting non-blocking system calls. So, now let us look at the kernel level threads. So, as before, the process uh, which runs in user space could have multiple threads with each thread being a separate or a, a independent execution unit and the management of these thread resources is done in the kernel space. So, along with the process control block that is shown here as the process table, the kernel also maintains a thread control block in the kernel space. So, this is quite unlike the user level threads where the uh, thread table is maintained in user space. Here the thread table or the TCB thread control block is maintained in the kernel space. And therefore, the kernel is aware of uh, the number of threads that a process executes and uh, therefore, could make a lot of decisions based on this fact. For example, the, uh, the scheduler could make more smart decisions about how much time slices should be allocated to a process depending on the number of threads the process is running. So, for example, the scheduler could decide to give threads with a larger number of uh, processes more amount of time to execute. An other advantage uh, is that since threads are uh, managed by the kernel, so uh, the blocking on system calls is not required. Essentially, when a thread executes a system call, uh, the other threads in that particular process can continue its execution. It does not have to block until this thread which invoked the system call has completed its invocation. The drawback of this particular kernel level thread model is that it is slow. Essentially, managing the thread would incur kernel invocations and therefore, since this kernel invocations involve system calls, therefore, it is considerably slow. Also, there are overheads with respect to the operating system and this occurs because the OS or the kernel needs to manage the scheduling threads as well as the processes. So, this means that in addition to the metadata uh, present in the kernel about the process, more metadata needs to be present for each thread that is executing in the process and therefore, the overheads in the kernel could be significant. So, when we actually design an operating system or for that matter an entire system which supports threads, there are several aspects uh, which need to be taken care of which may lead to a lot of complexities. So, uh, this particular slide highlights some of those issues. For example, what should the system do when a thread invokes a fork? So, as we know a fork uh, is a system call which causes the operating system to execute and it would result in a duplication of that process. So, a new process would be created which is an exact copy of the invoking process. Now, what would happen if a thread invokes the system call fork? So, there are several options that one could think of. So, what should uh, the OS do? Should all the threads that are executing in the process should be duplicated? In other words, should a new process be created uh, which also has the same number of threads executing in the same stages. So, this is easier said than done. Essentially, it could also create a lot of synchronization issues. For example, uh, consider the case that we have a process with 
two threads. One thread is executing a critical um, operation say in a critical section which is accessing a critical resource while the other thread invokes the fox system kernel. So, what would happen if the OS duplicates the entire process along with all its threads. So, as we have mentioned the second thread in the new process would also be in the critical section and as we have seen in earlier videos this could be catastrophic essentially it could uh, change the output of the program. Another uh, approach uh, that one could follow while designing or managing this particular aspect is where we duplicate the caller thread. So, even though the process may have 10 different threads, if one of these threads invoke the FOX system call, the new process created will only dupl duplicate that thread. So, the new process created will not have the remaining 9 threads, but will only have one of these threads. So, another thing to think about is what should happen when there is a segmentation fault in a thread. So, should the operating system terminate the just the single thread or should the entire process be terminated. Now, making choices for these is not easy and uh, operating system designers would need to make critical choices about how to manage these aspects while designing the operating system. So, let us see one typical application of the use of threads. So, uh, you could take for example, a network card where packets uh, keep coming in through the network and these packets have to be serviced let us say through threads. So, let us say we have a, a loop over here which keeps waiting for an event uh, to occur for example, the packet on the network and when that when an event occurs it spawns or it creates a thread which services that event and then terminates. So, during the process of servicing of that event if another event occurs then a new thread is created. In this way, we, we, we could have several events which are serviced simultaneously. So, this approach is scalable because it could service multiple events simultaneously. So, the drawback of this particular model is the overheads essentially creating and terminating, terminating threads though have less overheads is still an overhead which could reduce performance and these uh, could affect the entire uh, system. So, what applications typically do is use a technique known as thread pools. So, in this particular technique uh, what the application does on creation is that it is going to create a pool of threads for example, it could create say 50 or 100 different threads and these threads are would typically be in a blocked state. Now, there would be a main loop which keeps waiting for an event to occur and when an event occurs one of these threads which is in the block state is woken up that thread would then service the event and go back to the block state. So, in this way if there are 50 threads in this pool which are already created the uh, there are 50 events which could be serviced simultaneously without any overheads if the 51st event occurs while all the 50 threads in the thread pool are busy servicing the event, then the 51st event would need to wait. So, this way we see that we have eliminated the overheads of creating and destroying threads whenever an event occurs. So, now the only requirement is to uh, pick out a thread from the thread pool which would, would then service the event. Now, an other important aspect with thread pools is the number of threads in the pool. So, this is critical for, for every application and is going to be very application dependent. So, for example, if you have a thread pool with a very few number of threads maybe say 4 or 5, then it could ser service only 4 or 5 events simultaneously. If, uh, uh, if more events occur, then the events would have to be queued until the threads are have completed their servicing uh, and therefore, your performance is affected. On the other hand, if we have a large number of threads in the thread pool for example, 1000 threads while the events do not occur so often therefore, 
a large number of threads are uh, simply wasting resources uh, sitting idle in the thread pool. Therefore, the number of threads in the thread pool is critical choice that an application designer will have to make. So, with this we have given a brief introduction to threads. Uh, we had seen the difference between threads and processes uh, uh, and how threads could be actually used to reduce the execution time and improve performance of applications. And we have also seen a, a brief introduction of how threads are managed in operating systems and the various usage of threads. Thank you.